Thank you very much for joining me. How you been? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back, back, back. Steve Renazizi. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm the guy. Fucking lit. I'm the guy. I'm Steve Renazizi. Lit. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm the guy. Fucking lit. I'm the guy. I'm Steve Renazizi. What's the odd? What's the odd? What's the odd? What's 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 the odd? What's the odd? What's the odd? What's what what's so much Game of Thrones? You're just watching all of them. <laughs> Non-stop. Non-stop. I, I, I told you what I'm doing. I just watched the last season. But that's not as fun. Welcome back to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. What's you know, the odds? Man, Steve Ranazizi. We are live in the All Things Comedy Studio in Burbank, California. I am joined... Uh, pretty much as always now by my boys Brenton Biddlecombe, Lucas Hurl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and today is uh, January what? The fifteenth. Fifteenth. January fifteenth. Um, paid my taxes. Oh damn, yeah. dude. Yeah. How much? A Do you lot. Want you, I know how that feels. Yeah. I remember having the same feeling of being like when the like my first big check ever came in. I I paid I paid in taxes more than I had made in like two or three years. Up in that that whole year, years up until that point. Yeah, it was probably more than I've made the entire ten years in LA. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you feel like you should never have to stop at a stop sign, or like pay a ticket ever again. Yes. Park wherever you want. You have that feeling of entitlement and being ripped off. Yes. But God bless America. That's the way it goes, man. You should have just hit it better. Um, you could have dug a hole. You could have done what Bartnick did. <laughs> He told me he was going to give 200, 800 can- grand to his daughter and then 200 grand just moved to Italy and that's it. He could have done that. I mean, that's one way to go about it. I don't have a daughter. Could you have a dog? Yeah, that's true. Could have dug could've... a hole and put his 800 grand on right. the ground. <laughs> mm. um, first of all, I want to say thank you to those of you who came to the show in Pittsburgh this past weekend at the Improv in Pittsburgh. I had a great time. Uh, thank you to the great people at Pamela's Restaurant. I ate chocolate chip pancakes there. If you're ever in Pittsburgh, go to Pamela's. Um, and it was great. We had a fun time all weekend long. Uh, good crowds. And so, yeah. And then um, and then what happened? We watched a lot of football. I watched a ton of football this weekend. And I lost a $50 parlay that would have paid out 300 and like 7 bucks, I think it was. Uh, I told you guys about it on text. I bet the the Chiefs mm-hmm. and the over mm-hmm. and then the Seahawks. Uh, this is coming off a of Saturday, which I didn't. I mean, look, I, I don't know what happened on Saturday. No, Saturday, I couldn't get a thing right. Literally couldn't get a thing right. It was so hard. Vegas won a lot of money. Vegas won a lot of money. They saw things. I mean, I don't know who saw what, but I, I was... Exactly what I thought was going to happen. I think I even said it on the podcast. I, I, I said I think the 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 Vikings are going to come out energized off of that wild card, and it was the complete opposite. They got lit up, which is what I said. I said at least two scores. It was three, and then the the Titans had exactly the same. They came out. They, we, they, we I just picked wrong the wrong about team. That. Yeah, we were all wrong about that one. I don't think anyone got team. that right. Unless you were a fan of Tennessee, no one got that right. Or if you just bet against whatever the favorite is every time. They're such I a mean, hard no team to call. No one would have predicted that. They're such a hard team to call because you had Mariota start in the first four weeks. Yeah. So since, nobody believes in Tannehill. Yeah. Or no one believes. I mean, they, they don't even believe he's Trent Dilfer. You know, someone that can just manage a game and get them to the Super Bowl and have a great defense and a running game win the game for you. Well, he's also an underrated runner. Well, I'm saying, yeah. No one ever, Gase didn't realize that in Miami. The guy can run with the ball. He's a dual threat. Yeah, he's not trying to, he's just playing to be the best version of himself that he's trying, that he can be. But, you know, it's it's just trying to be Trent Dilfer, trying Mm -hmm. not to give the ball away and, and, and manage the clock. That's it. And they're doing a great job. Yeah, the defense stepped up. I, I just how they how they contained Jackson, kept him within the confines of the pocket for the most part. 
Well, that was the definition of Ben don't break because they gave up 600 yards of offense. Sure. The Ravens only got 12 points. Yeah, they're not a great defense. They're not, but they schemed well against yeah. Lamar Jackson. They did what they needed to do. They, like you said, Ben don't break, but you know they they didn't let him get away on big third down plays to try to run for a first down. They contained him, kept him within the confines of the pocket. Whenever a linebacker would try to keep the edge, he'd try to fake him. Then a safety would come out and take the edge again. Just made sure mm-hmm. he did not get out to the sidelines. The entire game. I and mean, you could tell he was uncomfortable. I mean, every one of his throws was like a dead duck. And again, playing from behind. That's not their normal mm-hmm. MO. Yeah. They like to run, play action, option, throw the ball, this and that. And then when you turn him into a like catch up quarterback, it made a big difference. It made a huge difference, I thought. Um I'm I'm happy for for Tennessee and Mike Vrabel. I thought about this. I'm like, I don't know what Tannehill's plans are or what their plans are as far as quarterback, but could you imagine if Tom Brady said that's where I want to go play next year? I mean, that might be a bet. That would not be the worst option. No. You know, a decent defense which could only get better. One of the a great running back, a throwback great running back. Mm-hmm. I can't where believe where you could it. clock control he was a stud in college, a Heisman runner-up, and he lasted till the second round. Who? Derrick Henry? Yeah. Cause he won the Heisman, didn't he? Maybe. Let's see. I think he won the Heisman. Yeah, I think he won. Yeah, he did win the Heisman in 2015. So, but he lasted till the second round because those Alabama running backs just had a stench on him. Like Eddie Lacy. Yeah. Because it was... I, I was under the... Uh, it was my opinion for a while when I wasn't really paying close attention to college... And, you know, the league was going on. We were just pretty much pro, pro, pro. But, like, I got to meet some college kids, college guys that came out. And it, I, I always thought it was like Saban runs. It's like Saban's like Belichick where it's like it's the program first. We get good players in, but we they're replaceable and it's next man up. So I never thought they had, like, I didn't look at them like they had, like, a Ricky Williams in Texas or right. a Vince Young in Texas right. or uh, Reggie Bush in fucking USC. So... But when you think about, like, Amari Cooper, weapons that came out of there, o- offensive weapons that, that came from Julio there. Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Then you have the running backs. You've got Ingram. You've got Derrick Henry. You know, these are uh, Heisman-winning running backs. And you forget, you go, oh, okay, he also recruits the top, top athletes and puts it all together. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, again, like, I was like, those guys just went under the radar because I'm like, of course the Alabama running back has – 1800 yards in the season you know they're they're 13 or 14 yeah. and 0 yeah it's before, not like the guy that stands out has 2,000 yards for a team that's like six and six right and you're like well all right that guy's obviously just more talented than everyone else i think trent richardson was such a bust that it dropped derrick henry to the second round that's another thing that's an yeah i mean it could be it could have been the stench of trent richardson who i who by the way was on the league yeah Nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah. Came. We did a whole. Right after he got drafted, we did a whole. We we redid the the draft, uh, and so he was on because he was the, I think the first pick. Right? Was he was the second, third pick? Third pick. Yeah. So and I remember we gave him wardrobe. We asked him to bring some stuff, but then we wanted to wear a suit, and so we didn't have a suit for him. So we tried to give him. We bought him a suit. You can't. Though he ripped the pants. <laughs> he put the pants on your fucking pants. He looked like Shrek, dude. He put the pants on, and it was like when Ferrigna would go nuts on, yeah. and the Hulk yeah. and just the, they would just split. We watched the seams split, <laughs> and he's like, "Nah, bro." And so we had he had just like it was like shooting from the waist up. I think wow. <laughs> so that was it. Yeah, uh, nicest wow. guy ever. Yeah, but you know, just didn't work out. But that might have been the whole thing, the whole reason why Derrick Henry went dropped, or you know, wasn't as looked at as highly. Uh, but I, I. I was impressed by Vrabel. I was impressed, um, obviously, by their going up big to begin with helped. And then just the the grit of just being like, we're going to control this game on the road. I mean, if they beat, they said if they beat Kansas City next week, they will beat the four top teams in each division in the, wow. in the AFC. And I don't they think would've, that's ever happened. They would have beaten Houston. Yeah. Uh then the Patriots, mm-hmm. then the Chiefs. The Bills beat them. Yeah, we did. The Bills beat them. Week yep. three. Um, Mariota. And, and Tennessee used our game plan against the Ravens on defense. Did they? Basically. 
Well, it's smart. It yeah. worked. It worked. I mean, I was shocked. And then I thought the next day on Sunday, I go, I'm watching because I'm, I'm dead. And I'm like, all right, everything I lost on Friday, I'm on Saturday. I'm like, you know, let's get it back on Sunday. And then I, I, I see Kansas City go down by 21, 24. Yeah, 20, 24. And I say to myself, this is happening all over again. What am I, a moron? I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to quit my own podcast. What, are you listening to my picks? <laughs> and then... Because that's when you texted us. Yeah. And Wait, then... 24 nothing. And he's and like, we am I cursed? Run. And then we went on the run. Yeah. We? And then they went on the run, <laughs> which was pretty crazy to watch. It was fun. There but were, I mean, I... There was seven minutes in that game on Sunday that was like video game worthy yeah. of like Madden NFL where one player doesn't know that the game's happening or doesn't this is his first time playing it was insane they just had to get warmed up well they took a week off they looked really sloppy and then they got that first quarter under them and they got back to what they were two years ago which looked pretty unstoppable so yeah they're different they don't mind playing from behind yeah. in front they whatever are, they are now the favorite to win the super bowl but if you had kansas city I mean, uh, if you had um, Tennessee and what were the uh, like Tennessee and someone else was it Green Bay were like twelve or fifteen hundred to one like at the beginning of the season at, no, the, at just... the beginning of the playoffs mm -hmm. for them being like and now it, you know it could be I, look another I don't think Green Bay's beating San Francisco this weekend no Green Bay the one I was like all right when that game came I was like okay the, I, I I was happy that that. Seattle kept it close. I didn't think it was. I, I didn't think Aaron Rodgers was lights out. I thought he played better than he has previously, like especially like uh, the last week of the season. But I think that he and that team could have been beaten. And I think that that bad call, or what was it, going forward on on fourth down, them trying to the fourth down call. Where they could have got the ball that, or kept the downs or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, I think that was that. What I'm, do, am I, do I have that right? I think well, so. Seattle didn't they also punt with like three and a half minutes to go instead of going for it? Yeah, I, I don't remember what. I, I just wish Russell Wilson had one more chance. Yeah, at it. I got fucked personally because it was a four point spread, and when they went, you went for, for two, two instead of kicking the extra point. They go for two. They're points. down by three, and that yeah. makes sense for them. It does not make sense for me. And everybody else that put our money down on Sneaky it. Sneaky Pete got you. And then I go, they're never going for a field goal now. They don't nope. want to close the gap on the spread. They want to win the fucking game. Mm -hmm. So lost by a point there, which was pretty frustrating. But I was excited that those games were fun to watch on Sunday. They, they were. were fun to watch. Yeah. Um, so you think there's no way that Green Bay beats San Fran? No. no I mean, look, there's a way of everything, no. but I don't, I don't see it happening. Not happening. You see a blowout? Der Aaron Rodgers, they showed a clip of his draft from 06 mm -hmm. when the 25. You saw that too? No. They said, you know, the 25 teams passed on him, and the ESPN reporter said, are the Niners going to regret not taking you first? Of course. No, but he gave a really great, you know. What did he say? Because he's up from up there. He's like, I'll, I'll make him regret it. Sure. And then maybe on Sunday he will. Not going to happen. But I don't think it's San going Francisco's to happen. Francisco's defense is healthy again. They are yeah. fierce. It's how not going to happen. How good's the Green Bay O-line? I know Belaga was hurt. It's not as good as the no. San Francisco D-line. No. He's so gonna, you, you he, both think San Fran wins. San Ford Fran's going to own the line. They're going to own the trenches. They're going to run the ball over all over Green Bay. I mean, it's not going to be like a blowout blowout. It's going to be a low-scoring game, but San, San Francisco is going to win by at least good, a dude. touchdown. They stopped the run big time from one of the top rushers yeah. in, the, in the league. Just They couldn't move the ball. They could not. It wasn't even an option to run the ball. The Vikings made some stupid calls, too, though. Mike Zimmer punted with nine minutes left down three scores. Yeah. I Yeah, and I was wondering why. I think he had three timeouts still. Mm -hmm. It's just what he's thought, well, I guess. But you know, I think this is a week you could see San Francisco's defense score at least a touchdown. Maybe this is one where they get two because the game gets sloppy for Aaron Rodgers and I mean stuff. Happens. Richard Sherman, who, who probably would you want that knows Aaron Rodgers better than Richard Sherman? That's true. You know, so you have that. That's you, a good point. I, I think Ford coming back for them. They're deep. That was the that was the most impressive unit to me. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all weekend long was their defense. They. They, I would they sack him six times, seven times, seven times, and the stat was when him and Bosa are together on the line, they had 24 sacks and 168 snaps. When he was out and it was just Bosa, it was the same amount of sacks, but it took them almost 900 snaps. So, 
them back together, they're pretty unstoppable. Uh, and that's what wins games and championships. Yeah. Time of possession, stopping on tough third downs, third and sixes, being able to rush the quarterback and get stops. I, I, I don't know. And Green we'll, Bay is not great against the run. And no. San Francisco is one of the best running teams in football. Their defense is better than it. I mean, look, they have finally gave Aaron Rodgers some sort of defense. Yeah. But it's not, not, it's it's not, not great. San Francisco. It's not great. Um, we'll, get, we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute. I want to I get into huh, what I think is the biggest sporting news of the week. And out, uh, pretty much overshadowed. If you can come close to overshadowing the NFL playoffs, it did. Uh, is this MLB cheating thing? And the fallout came this week, you know, with um, AJ Hinge and and Ludlow, I think is his name, the GM of the Astros, getting fired, and they, I think suspended for a year. Right. And then the the franchise got a five million dollar fine and lost its first and second round draft picks this year and next year. Okay. So first of all, I'm glad that I'm glad that. Something's being done, and it's not like we're still looking into it. It's an investigation. We'll get to it when we get to it. We, you know, we're, we're dotting all our I's and crossing all our T's. They, they moved quickly on it. They've mm-hmm. looked at the evidence, and they also showed a lot of the evidence, which I'm going to fucking show in a minute. Uh, do you guys, first of all, in your, did, what, when you first heard about it, did you think it was enough? What I did you think was. about it? The I th- suspension. I think the aftermath is, is still going on, so it's, it's not ending. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens with Beltron now. So Alex Cora from the Red Sox got fired. Yeah, well, he's also out for a year, so he can't get a job anywhere in he baseball. He got suspended for a year. as well for a year. And like when they say yeah. suspended, they mean like they can't go to spring training and he, like can't go to do a game. Anything, anything no, involved nothing involved with professional baseball, baseball. related. Uh, and then and now um, Carlos Beltran, the Mets yeah, manager, we'll see. Possibly could have, could be in the same situation. I, look. Go ahead. Tell me what you thought, and then I'll get to what I think. Go ahead. I, I, mean, thought, I thought it was fair. You thought it was fair? I mean, the players should have been punished, correct? You know, like we were talking before the podcast about Beltron. Well, they gave the players immunity so they would talk. Oh. So the players are safe. I see. So the players. See, I, I would like to hear more about this. I want to know which players... I want to know, uh, was it they came to the Major League Baseball and said, we've got something to say, or was it like they had to be strong-armed into saying it? Mm -hmm. Because to me, okay, here's my thoughts on it. Okay. No players got, when I first heard it, I said to myself, okay, well, you got a... it wasn't the, the number that I wanted for a, for a fine for a franchise. I don't think $5 million means shit to them. Not to a billionaire. Okay, no. not to a billionaire, it right? It is the max they were allowed under under the agreements. Under the agreement, right, that they made amongst themselves. Yeah, of course. Right? <laughs> so they say, hey, we're not going to fine each other more than $5 million bucks, even though each one of them knows that that's a drop in the bucket compared to what they have. But yeah. most money that they're allowed to do under the... Okay, two draft picks. Oh, yeah, that, that will certainly hurt... The depth of your of your farm system going forward, but again, remember you don't have, you now don't have to pay two draft picks each year. Mm-hmm. So I'm 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 guessing you're probably going to save more than five million dollars right there. Not it's necessarily. Not like, they why? have limits on fifty one percent of fifty one percent of first round draft picks make it to the uh, to the major league baseball, and something like like. I think a higher number of second round draft picks make it. Oh, I have I've read that too. Yeah. So you have but you would normally have to pay these guys. Not a t- not like the NFL or, you know, I think there's a limit of like I think there's a max of, of what you can pay a first a first round pick. I think Kyler Murray was going to be drafted by the A's or was he drafted he was, by the A's? Yeah. Yeah. He was offered what? 2 million dollars for a signing bonus? Something like that. So if that's one player in one position, if yeah. you got four guys like that, right? You're already yeah. over five million dollars. Okay. But so that okay. Th- th- so then, to me, the draft picks hurt the farm system, but may help in the pocketbook. Mm-hmm. And then you've got two guys who are not going to be part of your organization anymore. Get suspended for one year. No players. No players get suspension. Now, why? Because you're saying they they have immunity because they talked. Okay. I want to know: Did they come forward, or were they were they really had to be browbeaten into doing it? I look at Pete Rose, who got suspended for life. 
for gambling on baseball. Why? To protect the integrity of the game, right? That's what they said. That's what the whole thing was about, protecting the integrity of the game. So what is the integrity of the game? It's not to protect the integrity of baseball. Baseball is a product. So it's to in it's protect the integrity of the product. Who consumes the product? We do. Who's the biggest consumer of the product? Gambling. You want to make sure you know that when you bet on something, it is going to be a fair situation and not you're going to have a manager. So they suspended him for life, not for fucking with the legacy of baseball per se, but because you're fucking with our possible bottom line because you're making it, tainting it for everybody else. So. You suspend that guy for that, but now you've got a situation where you're you're literally affecting the results of your sport within itself, and you're going to suspend two people, or maybe three, or maybe four for one year, and no players that are involved, because they get immunity. They get immunity, so no one else is affected at all besides A.J. Hinch, Ludlow, Crane's already said he's sorry. This isn't the culture. This is coming off the whole bullshit with the reporter. Mm -hmm. right. that, that guy got suspended as well. He got suspended and then obviously fired later on, but it wasn't it wasn't right away. So I get Crane being like, I'm washing myself clear of it, but he's almost like, we're, we're done with this. This is over now. We're the Astros. We're moving on. Right. Okay. This was so blatant. This was so uh, um, contrived and, and built that it's it there's so many pieces that i say to myself you sh this is like you got to you th nothing compared to what i what i would have made them play the entire season in front of no fans <laughs> no fans yeah, I don't, you cannot have a home I game i don't disagree with you if i'm the astros owner and i'm looking at the what was the punishment and what i got in return he made out like a bandit i would do all that shit to win a world series you got to put an asterisk by the the title you obviously can't give the title just to the Dodgers because they were there, but you have to put some kind of asterisk, and if, it should have been also, punishment should have been harsher. When when the commissioner in after the 2017 Red Sox or tw was it 2017? Yeah, 2017 Red Sox had uh, they had a scandal. This was before Alex Cora even got there that they were using Apple watches uh, to maybe steal signs. That's when this whole thing kind of started, and that's when the, the commissioner sent out this memo. Yeah, none and of this it, will be tolerated. And it said in that memo, your head coach or your manager and your general manager will be penalized. So, I mean, they did that, obviously. Yeah, I mean... I, don't, I think it may have only extended to that. It may have been their only option. I... At I don't that think point, up until that point, because there really was not a lot of proof. We got proof now, dude. Yeah, I, people I know, are coming forward. I know that these aren't official lifetime bans, but I don't think any of these guys work again. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're building a now, let me tell you something. AJ Hinge was regarded as one of the best tactical managers, in game managers, and he had a rocky start with the, uh, the Diamondbacks because he lost the, the clubhouse there, but he had that clubhouse. I mean, obviously he had the clubhouse. He was helping him fucking <laughs> gain an advantage on the other uh, team. Well, according to the report, too, he he twice dismantled the system that they were using. Like, he wasn't a fan of it, and therefore, like, he literally broke the television they were looking at the signs on. Well, twice. And someone else rebuilt it. Can we talk about something very important, too, around all of this? The what? fact that Mattress Mac should be given back the $10 million he had to refund in mattresses because the Astros cheated to win the World Series? That's another thing. That's a good point. Mattress Mac, you know he's involved in this. Nothing got through without Mattress Mac's knowledge. Let's look. Let, let, I just want to show you what we're talking about here as far as... Just listen. So this is the, wh the whistling? This is the whistle. So the Astros accused of being... Of using a charge whistle... To signal breaking balls during this is game five of the 27 world 2017 world series let me make sure the volume's up and i get this freaking thing right nope i'm putting it down all right play you heard it yeah but that's coming from the dugout yep gone oh if you only had time to think you heard about it right, right there in the replay the yeah change up Especially when it's a fastball to get out of the way, but something slower. So a ground ball will score Altuve. 
Second and third. There one. it is. There. Gurriel! Gee, I wonder if you know. I wonder if Gurriel knew that was a changeup, guys. Hey, I should probably Daylight. sit on this pitch. It's not going to be a fastball. I to know that it was going to be guaranteed that my. I mean, Bregman could make this a one run. I remember that hit. Home run of the postseason. That curse See, I was when you hear this in now, this is in the regular season. if I'm a Dodger fan, dude, I'm pissed. This is in fucking infuriating. Shut up. And He's even when it doesn't work, it's still now. My wife said to me, she goes, well, does it really help to know what's coming? Fuck yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, that's I, everything. When you can eliminate half of what, you know, it's either a changeup or an off speed pitch. Well, if you know the guy only has a fastball. In every game, maybe two pitches are working for a pitcher, and you know that by the third inning. So if it's not the fastball, you know it's going to be the curveball. That's all he's throwing at you. And by the way, if even if it's not every single pitch, what if it's the, the, the situation where it's a man on second, two outs, I got two strikes, three and two, and, and you're going to tell me, you're going to tell me right now. If there's a fastball coming? Yeah. Definitely I mean, affects the game. And hearing it now and going back and having it broken down, because like you said, the internet, they, they catch everything. This is this is egregious. Yeah. And how... Look, you could... I guess if you're a player, you can say, I don't know, I didn't listen. People did what they did. They whistled when they whistled. I played the game the way I wanted to play it. Okay, you can go, you can hide behind that. But you tell me now, if I'm Altuve, you think Altuve's got a, doesn't have a, a, a an asterisk next to his name or his batting championships? You got to put it by everybody that year. You got to put an asterisk and you got to do something to, to show that they, they cheated. It's they flat out cheated and they're getting away with it. Makes those steroid users look a little better, I don't think those punishments better, are that harsh. Again, I don't think so either. If I'm the owner... I would pay that five million in the draft picks to take a ring. Hell yeah, give me that every time. I'll cheat every ten years and I'll win every ten years. And that's the thing. You're they're not gonna take the ring away. No. They're never gonna do that. You can't. They're not gonna do it. So you got your championship. Mm-hmm. And they get to hang the banner. They don't have to take the banner down. I mean, it, it, it it's if I'm Pete Rose, I'm because he he came, he was like, none of the players get suspended. I, that that makes no sense to me. Yeah, it makes no sense. If you're, if you, I would have to call every one of those guys in there. Can, can I ask you a Pete Rose question, Pete? Sure. Uh, so, if you were Pete Rose and you were invited into the Baseball Hall of Fame right now, would you go? I mean, Pete Rose is going to go. You like you? You would accept? I almost think he's better off not being in it at this point. He's yeah, more I mean, famous. It's more, for, more, yes, he's more famous right now. But before he dies, he wants to know that he's immortalized. In the Hall of Fame. I, I, I mean, he's still I'm a, him. He's a competitor. He wants to be. Because remember, let's, the best. let's go. Let's let's best also put it under the, what we know now versus what we know then. Pete Rose was suspended for having what is now considered a mental disease. Yeah. Right. You got a gambling problem? Come right. here. We'll help you. Right. You got an issue? Come here. We'll help you. Mm -hmm. That's what he got a lifetime suspension for. Yeah. yeah. No one's helping him. And by the way, when you really break it down, he was only betting on his own fucking team. So it's like he was taking steroids to ha to make himself better at, 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 at his own job. He was giving himself his an extra own motivation. motivation. Yes. So these guys, th this to me Just is flat is out cheating. Flat out. When you, it's not. I'm not trying to beat, um, make money for myself. I'm trying to cheat the other team, the other players. That I gain an advantage on them. Yeah. And that, to me, is, is a bigger fuck you. I now, agree. Is there an agreement amongst MLB teams not to talk about this further? Because I'm surprised more players aren't trolling. I've heard the they all have online. a gag order on them or something. I don't uh, know. It, yeah, it, in the report, they were they were told not to comment on it. The teams. The, the, the teams that are involved directly, correct? All 30 teams. All 30 teams. This because you got PR former nightmare. players. If you want it to go away... You have to make sure no one's talking about it. I mean, the same thing happened when uh, the the with order, the NBA the and the whole China the thing. Did you notice how nobody talked about it after a certain yeah. point? But that because was they were probably told, do not talk about it or we're going to fine you. That's how you get rid of these things. That's why it didn't stay in the news that long. So this will be gone in a couple of weeks because no one's going to be talking about it. But if someone on like the... The Rays tweeted out, this is horse shit, and this is how, and then that gets trending. And then someone else comments from St. Louis, then that gets trending. You tell them all to shut up or we'll find you, and it goes away. 
it it baffles me how listen, listen it's crazy I would make them play every single home game without without a, a um a single person to stand I know it affects the the uh the community mm -hmm. yeah but that that when you when you fuck up you're like I'm a classic fuck up when I fuck up my family suffers my my everyone suffers around you so maybe you will everyone around Houston will learn a lesson from this they will they won't they, they'll look harder at their own team and say maybe this is not a situation that's uh, on the up and up that's why I'm so happy the Texans lost you can't you can hear every whistle when there's not a single person in that fucking yeah. in those stands you'll hear every whistle every um drum pale bang did they determine who was playing the bongos I don't know Probably sure. Alex Cora. By yeah. the way, the Staten Island Yankees have been the first team to fire back. I want to give them a plug. I think it's September 30th. I'll look it up. Uh, st uh, first 1,500 fans at the Staten Island Yankees game get a souvenir mini pail so that you can bang on your own mini pail. <laughs> That's fucking great. I got to pull that great. up. Yeah. So I'm very happy that the Yankees have been the first team to take a shot. Fuck them. And I'm sorry. I, you know what? I feel a little bit bad for, for Boston. But you hired the wrong guy, yep. and you also listened to him. To me, I say to myself, that year was the year that Aaron Boone, because the Yankees fired Girardi and they fired John Farrell. Mm -hmm. Both had won World Series, and both were like you know maybe lost the the team. It's a younger team, younger a younger manager, and the Yankees were going to go after Alice Cora. They they interviewed him, and he ended up signing with the with the Red Sox, and and you know the Yankees got Aaron Boone. But I was I wonder if the Yankees did hire Alex Cora. Would he had tried to implement that? Would they have listened? To Maybe. I mean, you can't even get a fucking you can't even wear the hair you want to wear on the Yankees. Yeah. You can't even have a beard. So I don't know how how they would do with, with cheating. But can I tell you something though? When I told my son this tonight, I was talking to Jonah this morning mm -hmm. during breakfast. I told him about the whole whistle thing I was showing him, and he said, uh, "I don't blame the players." I go, "What do you mean you don't blame the players?" And he said, uh, they got to listen to their manager. He's like, would you want to not listen to your boss if your boss told you? Do you think you'd get cut? Do you think you'd have more playing time? And I was like, shut up and eat your breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, I guess that does make some sense when you're like, I, you, imagine you're traded there and you're just like, all of a sudden, like, this is how we do this and this is, and that's our cheat room. And it's like, oh, okay, well. Yeah, you want to fit in. Yeah, mm -hmm. there is that, but fuck them. Really, I'm just, I'm so, I mean, not just because the Yankees were directly involved, but also because it's like. Yeah, this make me feel bad for Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, maybe he isn't him that up bad of a postseason pitcher. As a, as a Cardinals fan, I might have to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty bad against you guys too, right? Oh, yeah. Um yeah, it's I, I'm I'm not happy with the with the fallout so far. I'd like to see a couple players, and I'd like to see harsher punishment. But why don't I think we make maybe, it a thing. He's he's jeopardized the integrity of Major League Baseball. The owner of the Astros. Why don't you make it a three strike thing? Make it a pun, and if he fucks up two more times, take the team away. Well, force I, I him don't to know sell. How you do that. You probably you need the other owners to support to do that. Yeah, I don't they know. They should how. all sign off. They want to save baseball. Yeah, I just. I, I, well, I'm not you know saying what? fire him after this one incident, but if he gets caught again doing something, get him out of there. I also think that um, that you know he that this is going to be. Well, we'll see what happens as far as fans and how they react. I mean, I, I'm you know to Astro see how fans they, are going to show up and they're going to. Oh, be Astro cheering. fans are going to be fine there and stuff. But yeah. like when the Astros go on the road, they are going to be a oh, real so hated so. team almost in every single ballpark. Because hope so, you know, you, you you didn't just cheat. The one team. You cheated against every team. Mm -hmm. Every fucking team that's affected by that. Uh, so I hope that every every ballpark treats the fucking Astros like shit next year. And that's the way they deserve it. <laughs> and if you sign with them this year, go fuck yourself. Sorry. Yep. Um, let's talk about the only thing non-sports-wise that really matters. The impeachment? No. Iran? No. Kate, uh, the princess, and the and the guy moving to no. Canada. No, even though I'm very interested in them leaving their life. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that fascinates me about 
just being like, fuck you, I'm out of here. I can't take this shit anymore. But that's not the most important thing. We know what the most important thing is. It's The Bachelor. It's back. Um, Peter is back. Peter, well, Peter's the new guy. He's our Bachelor. Now, I guess he was introduced during the Hannah G. Bachelorette season mm-hmm. last year. Hannah, season 15. Hannah B. Hannah B. Hannah Beast. Hannah Beast, who... Isn't it crazy that, like... I mean, I didn't watch after the season that we watched, but then they bring back all these characters, and I feel like I know all these well, people. Well, because I'm realizing here... I, it's I, just a cesspool. It's of, a cycle of shit that you they just flop around. And it is hard they to watch. They move it around like this. They stir it with their little finger. And You've never just, watched before, right? Um, it's been years, so yeah, it it's my new favorite show. hard to watch. For those of I you don't who don't know what it. we're talking about, one person last week said that we should definitely watch The Bachelor again and talk about it, and that was enough for us to make the decision to do it. <laughs> Thank you to that person. <laughs> um, we're it's doing The good. Bachelor again. I watched the three-hour... Pre- I, I, and I'll say this. I, I, they're not a sponsor. But thank the Lord Almighty for Hulu. Thank you, Hulu. Condenses it down, takes out all the commercials. If they could, Hulu, my only suggestion, have The Bachelor, the hour 23 version, and then have that, that, that dirt, like that editor's cut version of like, and you can get it down in like 30 minutes. Skip a lot of the date shit. Give me some well, like. My fiance would tell you, as she, she works at Hulu, that they put up what they are sent. So ABC, <sighs> get your shit together. Give if, us. If we just give us pull, the if director's we sucked out cut. The fucking aerial shots and the drone shots. We well, lose he's a, a half he's hour a pilot. Right there. This season, he's a pilot, so you got to have the aerial shots. I can't good. take it anymore. I'm getting fucking sick to my stomach <laughs> watching the show. The number of air, airline pl- puns. An airplane. Oh pun. my oh, god! It was so when great. those bitches showed up, I'm when they a showed flight up, attendant, and that makes me unique. And ABC no one threw else is in like 16 that. flight attendants. Yeah. Half of them. <laughs> By the way, I'm already convinced 100% he's banged at least one of these girls already. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying since he's... Uh, before they all started. The girl in the hotel. The hotel girl, for sure. He banged sure. that girl Kelly? for yes. sure. Yes. A hundred percent. Nobody meets in a hotel and then... Because my thing is, like, I bet you they go to the girls. Like, look, it's down to the final 40. We're going to pick 30 of you guys. We got a real good... Where you think you're in? She takes that. She goes off on her vacation with her friends, right? It's And, and by the way, sweetheart, here are the three guys we have narrowed down to The Bachelor. Three guys right here, right? And then he's going, all right, they're probably telling him, you're The Bachelor probably, but don't tell anyone yet. Mm-hmm. And here are like 30 girls. And then she probably walked over to him. You got to be Peter, right? And he's probably like, yeah, yeah. And she's like, I don't want to say anything, but I'm auditioning. I'm probably going to be on The Bachelor. And bing, bang, boom, they're banging in the fucking hotel room. Mm-hmm. Let's get this thing started. Why wait? And she's put on her running shoes before the race even started. Let's build a storyline. Exactly. So, so I'm convinced he's already done it. A hundred percent. So she didn't have to impress anyone. She came in rocking. She's a lawyer. I got a brain. I put out. My shit's together, right? She's she's the one. What's what, uh, what's her name again? Kelly. 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 Let's pull up these ladies, please. She's Kelly. got a lot of confidence. She keeps interrupting what, dates. Is he too. dead? Oh my god! Oh. Yeah, this was the cliffhanger. <laughs> it's the cliffhanger that they put. Flight at the attendant. End of the year. Flight attendant. Look at these. Which one? Kelly. 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 Let me. Uh, the, there we go. An attorney from Chicago. Now, she, yes, she came out of the gates. Oh, someone's at my door. Um, she came out of the gates swinging because she had already established the relationship. And then, you know what else she did, what I liked? She told the other girls. Mm-hmm. She didn't keep it to herself. She could have just said, you know, we've known, we know where we are. Mm-hmm. But she told the other girls. Why? Because she's smart. She's getting in their heads. Let's fuck around. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. I met him. It was kind of a thing. You, those girls are thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Oh, whoops. He this fucked is, her already. This is the exact hotel where we met at. Oh, and now they have us here on a date. this is a date. coincidence? Yes. Whoa. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. The Bachelor's back. I'm excited. Uh, I have notes like I'm Donald Trump at a beauty pageant grading women for my draft. Oh, you we'll gave them A's, B's, and C's? Yeah, don't look at my notes, please. Okay, I'm not. Um, I think I have all their names. I know two of them got kicked off the last show. Three of them got kicked off the last mm-hmm. show. So lost, yeah, there's 19 ladies number. left. 19 ladies and left. Kelly has immunity, correct? Yes, she does. 
Because she's smart. Yeah, and they all hate her too. All the women hate her. Um, cheater. That's what everyone says. She <laughs> cheated at the games. Right. And the she fr- did. Yeah, she did. The the games. See, this is the thing about these. They set up these elaborate <laughs> games, like yeah, the, you know, the obstacle courses. Like, first of all, they spun the girls around on the first episode because this guy's a pilot. Peter's a pilot, mm-hmm. so every woman that showed up had some sort of pilot pun. One came with wings. One had a barf bag. Paper airplanes. Paper airplanes. None of them worked. None of them were memorable. You know who he remembered? The girl he banged in the hotel. That's who he probably yep. you know had a oh, and then Hannah, of course, uh-huh. Hannah from the last season. Which apparently, I didn't watch the last season, but apparently this guy made it down to the final two, two or two. I believe, yeah. And I guess there was a situation where they went on a, on a fantasy date to some place with a fucking windmill. Yeah, and they increased. ended up having sex four times in the course of a night in a windmill. Now, first of all, that's not even impressive to me, okay? As a premature ejaculator, I have sex four, <laughs> four times. Because, you know, the first time you take your pants off, that's one. Boom. Mm-hmm. Then he's probably the shameful one. I'm so sorry that happened. He's got to bang one out. That's going to take two seconds the first time he does it. And then he fucks for real the third time. And then he does it in the morning again because he's reloaded. So, really, were they four quality sexual encounters? Probably not. Okay? Now. But that's memorable to her, memorable to him. I guess she at that point said, fuck you. He, I guess he thought they were going to be together forever. And she said, you know what? Fuck you. I'm picking the other guy. Yeah, he was in the final three and she cut him. Yeah. We're, 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 welcome back to the fucking podcast. I know you were just on your phone. <laughs> no, I'm minutes, looking through the girls. I'm looking through the girls. I'm looking through the girls. Jesus Christ. I've all... got my picks picked. Hello. Anyway. <laughs> um so I guess at this point now, she had is broken up with the guy she chose. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, she sees Peter out there now with the attention of 30 women. And she's like, fuck you. I, I, you know, I, I'm going to wet my beak again. So she puts Did her fucking nose. Did you notice it goes deeper? Here's my theory. She is now, because I think she, Cassie said she won Dancing with the Stars. I don't know. I don't know. She, she, she was on the show, and she was re- allegedly recording Dancing with the Stars while The Bachelor was recording. So they're like, how could she live in the house and be doing reality TV at the same but time? But I think that her agent was like, you got to get back on the show. You That's what my wife put says. Put your my face like, this is- everywhere right now. You have a thing. You're You're hot. You're the, you're the 15 minutes of fame. Let's keep that going. But isn't this a cycle? Like, after next year, it's over, right? She's done, or is she going to be like... Pe- She's creatively finding ways. I should have been done when she was on the Our last season, one. The one yeah. we watched. The one should she have been lost. done then. But Hannah Beast will not be killed. It is remarkable how, like, a virus, this girl keeps showing up. She showed up in the first episode. Yeah. Then she completely hijacked. Yeah. Hijacked the date night. These girls, these girls wanted a date. Yeah, Cassie said she had never seen a date canceled like that. It before. was crazy. This guy just had a sob session with his old lover in his in the in the back of a fucking theater. And by the way, same theater we shot the Trent Richardson thing in. The oh Avalon really? And Hob- Connections. Hollywood. Connections. You got it. Hey, by the way, January nineteenth this Sunday. If you're in Hollywood, come to the Brody Stevens. I guess it's a um, YouTube launch page. I don't know what we're so calling it. So they're. They're launching a YouTube page of all of his old periscopes because if you have an inactive account on Twitter, which his like mine has become, and mine is, it uh, eventually will be deleted by Twitter. Yeah. So to preserve his memory and all of his content, um, his manager and a few other people are launching his YouTube page yeah. to to have everything live there in one place, so you can go and and you know watch his stuff and remember him and share him with people. And there'll be guests. I'll be doing something. Other people. It's twenty bucks if you're in Hollywood on Sunday. And all the money is going to be donated to charity. And me, I'm getting some of it too. Oh, you are? No. Um, <laughs> back to the Bachelor now. So she's back. Hannah's back and decides that he asks her, I want to go on to, I want, I want you to be on the show, which right away, if I'm, I, I agreed with that one girl that was like, fuck you, I'm out of here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like, good for her to say that, by the way. Yeah. Now, the only thing that I said, I go, that's not a smart move because if you want to be the bachelorette next time, you got to continue on with the game and play it. No girl that's like considered, you know, like, cause I think that's half of it. Half of them yeah. want to get, Fuck this guy and marry him and get his heart. And then half of them just want to get far enough and yes. become enough 
to be the. I want my choice of thirty people. Mm -hmm. That's that would be the avenue I'm going down. Charming, yet something's wrong with that guy. Mm -hmm. That's me. That's my brand. So I, I'm thinking these girls are probably thinking that too. But you can't do that if you're the first person voted off or you quit the show the first week because you don't like the you know the situation that ABC's put you in. Because it's them. They're the one that's doing it. They didn't Hannah B didn't just show up in her own fucking limo. They they set that shit up. Yep. And and why not? Because they may have a boring bachelor on their hands. What do you think of this guy? I mean, he's Col Colton was Colton was, Colton more was interesting. like Colton was interesting because it was like when watching when you won the million dollars. It's like I don't know how someone so simple is accomplishing all this right now. Does that make sense Steve, to you? Steve, I also won ten thousand dollars. I won four hundred dollars last night. I know what I'm doing. Just because I have this very calm, cool, collected I'm look not saying, to me. I'm not, I don't mean it as a dig, Brenton. I'm it, just saying it felt like, like a dig. No, did when it not you come off as I didn't a dig. Mean it as a Aaron dig. laughed. Well, he's laughing because it's a comedy podcast. No, 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 no. That was a dig. That it's was not a, dig. a dig. If you took that it that way, that's dig. your problem. I said. You've been saying for months okay. that I found money in a hole in the ground and that I'm an idiot. You prefaced I'm not every you're the person Forrest that was there football. in attendance that I sucked at fantasy football. Don't listen to him. You're not the Forrest Gump of fantasy football. You didn't just happen to show up at a million dollars plopped in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I'd only it, been playing for two killed, weeks on DraftKings when I won. It fucking kills me to this day. And I, it's... It's what I talk to my therapist the most about. And I didn't so put 150 uh, lineups in. Yeah, like the last Bachelorette. Um, I'll say this. I don't know. I have some I have some opinions who I think is going to win. I'm excited about doing a draft because I've got, I, I feel like I've done Clearly. more work on this <laughs> than I did in my real fantasy football yep. drafts this year. Yep. And there are some, like that Kelly girl, this past week's episode where she lost her shit over the champagne mm -hmm. was bonkers. That was fun. And and I'm happy that... Let's pull her up. Let's pull her up. Where is she? What's her... Uh, what's... Kelly, right? No, that's not... Ke Kelsey. Oh, it's Kelsey from Iowa? Yeah, she's my uh, yes. dark horse. There she is, dark Kelsey. Horse. She's from my hometown. I have to go for her. Uh, per professional clother. Yeah. So, did they go over what her job actually? Like, did they go follow she, her around? What do you mean? She clothes herself. She gets dressed Not much. every day. Good for her. Yeah. I like that. She knows um, how to put the pants catwalk on. thing. Uh, I, that was a uh, like a challenge that I was like, this is sort of dumb, but this is just basically like just show us your bodies. Oh, and she's a twin. She is? She is a twin. Bachelorette biography. She's in Iowa. I know. Oh. I want to know if her other twin lives in Iowa. She was crowned Miss I Iowa. I mean, she's hot. Yeah. But she's crazy, Lucas. I know. She cried in the first episode. Cried in the first episode. She's she cried every... So they've probably shown us a sequence of, what, four or five days or maybe a week in the two episodes that we've watched so far. Breaks she's down cried every single time. Every day that's been a new day except for one, I think. Her whole thing about the bully, too. And what, everyone's being like... She, yeah, that was great. Her, I'm I being did, bullied. I, bullied? She she took... The, like, she literally told him word for word what what she said to her. And she was getting upset hearing it back. She was drunk. I know. She's been drunk the whole <laughs> the series. <laughs> every every time you turn around, she's got a fucking she's glass fucking in her wasted. hand. She's uh, fucking wasted. Victoria P., I was saying before... They were throwing. They put. Her, they put that poor girl, even though she didn't want to do it, in that contraption that spins yeah. you around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And then they didn't even like. They didn't even go up in planes. They just did that whole. Right. Well, like, they race around the track. They can't afford to put every woman up on her own private jet ride with Peter. I mean, but I'm saying like, she really she lost. Like it wasn't like a preparation for really like the game. Right. And then the game's rules didn't even matter. I would have been like. You spun me around and I could have cheated the whole fucking time? She was crying. She was crying because she threw up in front of a boy. When she said, I've never thrown up in front of a boy, I was like, my God. 
I've never thrown up in front of a boy. These are children, Steve. She's like 24 years old. Yeah. But they show, you know, they, they, you remember her telling the teacup story, right, at Disneyland? Yes. I can, yeah, but by really the way, I, throw, I can't do that. Can you do the teacups? I did it as an adult. I, I remember doing it when I was a kid, and I thought it was great. I did it as an adult, and the rest of the day I was wrecked. Dude, it's crazy. I can't do the teacups. And you know the, the, the one you sit on the swing, and it's just got the, the metal, mm -hmm. yeah. and they go around? I can't, it cannot do that. Cannot do that. Do that many people barf on the teacups? Oh. I just have this perception that that well, ride is just all barf now. It might be because kids don't really feel it as much. No. Like I, I don't. I, when I was a kid, I could have sat in that, but like yeah, for some that was reason, one of my favorite. When rides. you're in the cup, by the way, when you're in the cup, not only are you moving around like this, right, and doing like that, mm -hmm. but then you there's a thing you can twist your own fucking right. cup. So you're on like two swivels. Yeah. So like. And if, if you're in with strangers and they're twist because they're fucking thrill seekers and you have a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> a you know, a fucking yeah, you got a naughty cake. stomach, a tight tum tum, yeah. and you can't be like, hey guys, can you not fucking twist it? You know, they're going to twist it yeah. and you're going to throw up. She's very, the, yeah, um, Victoria P, she's interesting. I, She's cried a lot. She's gotten very emotional with Peter. You know, when he brought her that bottle of water after she was yakking, she's like, no one's ever done that for me. He's like, he just brought you a bottle of water in the bathroom. I know. No one's ever, because she never cried in front of a boy before. I mean, never threw up in front of a boy before. I'm like, yes, you have. You never threw up in school. You never barfed on the floor in school. My brother one time, he was in the back row of his classroom and he's allergic to red food dye. We didn't know. You know, when you're a kid, you don't, you find out you're yeah. allergic to something after you throw up or get hives or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> and someone brought in a cupcake, someone's birthday, he pounded two or three of them. And then he guys like projectile vomit. So he hit like two kids in front of him. He hit like, he threw up on them. And how I found that was like, I called to the principal's office. I was in eighth grade and I was like, oh shit. And I go in there and I go in the office and there's like two kids crying, just covered in like pink vomit. <laughs> and I go in the office and my brother's in there and he's crying too. And the, the principal, she's like, ah, he threw up, but he blasted these fucking kids. These poor kids didn't even, imagine just sitting there doing your work <laughs> and then just fucking pink vomit just flies onto your back, dude. Uh, Hell, the whole class didn't start throwing up. I don't know. And then the guy comes in, the janitor comes in with the cat, the kitty litter. And just yes, that stuff. I forgot the about that stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know how many people <laughs> have thrown up on those fucking teacups at, at, uh, at Disneyland? And they just, they probably have like a whole, just a whole warehouse filled with cat litter that they just have to throw on top of that fucking thing all the time. They probably should be easier to put it in <laughs> yeah, cat litter. It's called the cat litter ride. Uh, let's do a draft of these ladies now because I only have like 15 minutes left because yes. I'm coaching JV basketball at my son's school and practice starts at 3.30 even though I'm going to be a little late. Um, all right. So there's 19 ladies left. Brenton. There's Jesus. Three are, you, of us. are you here? There's th I'm, I'm going through the, the, the girls. Great. I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, you can pick first. Lucas, Great. You can go second. Who's going to write them down? You got to write them down? I'll write them down. All right, my first pick, 100%, Hannah Ann. Damn, that's a good pick. Thank you. She's got beautiful eyes, looks a little bit like um, the chick from Baywatch. Mm -hmm. Yasmin Bleeth. Yep. Has a oh. real... Can and, you give me... Uh, can you and scroll I like down when a she bit? Was, I like when she was uh, accused... I want to see, way to see Yeah, I want to see When she was accused them. by the other girls. She by, and she's like, I, I, which I respect. She kept saying, like, I, what is the word she used? I respect your opinion. No, it wasn't that. She was like, it was like the perfect therapist word. So I don't know what she said, but she's fucking smart about it. So I'm taking her. Hannah, Anne is mine. It's a very good pick. Okay, with the second pick in the Bachelor draft, I'm going to take Madison. She's okay. already had an intimate date, saw his parents renew their vows. She's met the family. Okay. Can I borrow your pen? Yeah. You guys backed me into a corner, now I have to take Kelly. Oh, really? You're taking the hated one. Now, are we going to loop? Is Brenton getting the first pick of this round since we... Are huh? we doing a fantasy football style? We'll snake it, right? You're right. Uh, so then my second pick, I'll take Lexi. He has something for that redhead. Every one that you take, and I have like a question mark, what the fuck next to them. <laughs> How crazy they are. Uh, you're up, Lucas. I'm going to go Kelsey. I was finest. Okay. 
And also Hannah B's in this conversation too, correct? Well, that's the thing we have to decide. I, I, I don't, I know. I'm saying what we should do is. We're going to have one person left over because there's three of us. So Hannah B. Should and just... there's 19 left. So I say we cannot draft Hannah B. We'll use yeah. her as a wild card later on. We'll yeah. maybe do the field versus Hannah B. Or okay. something. All right. Is it my turn or is it it's your turn? It's your turn, turn for I'm two. I'm taking Victoria. Which one? Fuck. Oh, Victoria P. Yeah. <laughs> Victoria F or Victoria P. Are you even watching oh, the show, Oh, Victoria Steve? F, yes. Okay. Oh, she, really? Yeah. I, she He gave her that rose last night. She's super hot when her face is super I hot. I agree. And her body's pretty ridiculous when she wore that thing, too. So she's a total package. I'm taking But her. they sold it well in the first episode. She was the she last one to get her rose. She cries too much, and she's got to get her shit together. It's like, what do you... She's like, I'm, I'm out of here. Why? Because you didn't win? Buck up, Victoria P. Get, get, get your shit together. You're in this well, fucking Hannah thing. Hannah Ann pulled some shady shit on that runway. Yeah, she did the whole flash where she hit her with the thing. Whatever, yeah. hit her back then. Start a fight. Then get, take an extra little. Look at Janice Dickinson, by the way. Has anyone fallen more? I, I had a, I thought that was, by the way, I thought that was Caitlyn Jenner. I said the same thing. For a while. I said the same. And even beyond that, I said, God, Caitlyn Jenner's let herself go. <laughs> Because I just saw her in Bert's thing, whatever the fuck she's doing with Bert. Yeah. And then I saw this. I go, God damn, what the fuck happened to, to Caitlyn Jenner? And then I saw it was Janice Dickinson. And by the way, Janice Dickinson did a show not too long ago, probably like five or six years ago, where I was like, I'd fuck Janice Dickinson. It was like a reality show. I'm like, she looked pretty good. But it something happened drastically. Yes. She's like a white walker now. All right. <laughs> Who's next? I got my second pick in. All right. So, uh, Wait, you're up you had next. Victoria F. Yeah. So you, get, you go again. I Victoria. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Victoria P. I'm going to back Damn. it up then. Back up to Victoria's. I had her as a B plus. Okay. <laughs> Steve, can you scroll up just a tad? Throw up. I've never had a boy throw up on me. Victoria I mean, like, P. Savannah. Savannah. Yeah. Savannah Una Na. Okay. I'm going to go with uh, Tammy. All right. Tammy's then, a wacko. That's I, what I, I don't think a flight attendant has been drafted yet. And because then it's not going to happen. Dude. I'm going to take uh, McKenna. Okay. Oh, re- she's crazy. Crazy, yeah. I crazy is less. Loving. So the way that this works, Lucas, is um, if your girl gets eliminated this next week, you get one point, and then every week that she survives, you get an additional point. So... You add okay. up whoever has the highest score. So I'm fine with taking crazy because producers will keep crazy on longer than they need to. <laughs> I think the only reason that Kelsey made it through was because she's crazy and they know that and they want to keep her and Hannah Ann kind of fighting because it have, makes yeah, things more interesting. Did they X out the people that are already out? Uh, there was a site. I'll look up the site that we used uh, to use because there I, was one. Remember the I one hope we we're used? Not drafting people that are out. No, these are the girls that are left, I think. Well, well how many 19. are there? So let's count. Yeah, there's One, 19 two, three, still there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, okay, nineteen, fuck. twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 24. That's all of them. That's every one of them. Okay, so, so let's what's, let's go to the site that. Uh... I say we keep drafting. My dad watches this show, and uh, <laughs> he he, okay. he he calls Chris Hansen the pimp. That's a good idea. I mean, that's really I what I can he write is. down the girls that have been eliminated. All right, write them down. Who are they? Uh, I got uh, Kalia, Marissa, Avalon, Leah is out. Courtney is out. Uh, Eunice is out. Jade is out. Jade? Jenna is out. Katrina is out. Kylie. Oh, I like Kylie. She's out. Lauren, gone. Marissa, not Marissa. Marissa, yeah. Marissa. Out. And that's it, right? Uh, Megan. Megan, the too. flight attendant. I did. Now he eliminated. I think all the flight attendants. Peyton. Yeah, because they all fucked other yeah. pilots. He knows the guys that they <laughs> fucked, and he's like, "No, I'm not fucking the guy that." <laughs> yeah, so that's Craig that's fucks all everybody the time. that's out. His so. layover in Charlotte. <laughs> um. All right. Whose turn is it to draft? Lucas. Okay. Go. Um. I'll go with Tammy. I have Tammy. Oh, you have Tammy. Damn it! I want Tammy's Tammy. off the board. Um. Let's go with uh, Sarah. 
medical radiographer from Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. Bingo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve for two picks. Uh, Alicia. Is there an Alicia? Right? Aaliyah, sorry. Okay. Okay, and where's my other B? Alexa. I like her style. That's who I would have taken. Yep. Can I get the one on the second row bottom from the left? Jasmine? Yeah, Eunice. Eunice. Oh, wait. She's out. She's She's out. out. Damn it. She's out, dude. Um, damn it. Okay, let's go uh, Deandra. Deandra. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, fuck. I guess I'm going to go... Oh, she's out. Can you... Uh, Give me a scroll. Megan's out. Peyton's out. Morris is out. Do I go with just because she's a boss ass bitch? But on the clock, for God's sakes, Since man. Since when is there a clock in the Bachelor Since it's draft? It's time, dude. It's we time never to established. Do the thing, the Bachelor draft clock. The Bachelor does need rules, by the way. All right. Um, here's what I'm going to do, because I got two picks. I'm going to uh, swing for the fences, and I'm going to go Natasha. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to go uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne! All right. Has Sydney been taken? Oh, you motherfucker. You wanted Sydney? Well, you know. Yeah. You want her? I do want Sydney. Okay, Sydney's out. She's winning this thing. Last pick, Steve. You have two girls left. Who I got? Jasmine C. Or Peyton? Uh, Peyton's been eliminated. Okay. What about Kira? Uh, Kira. Was Kira taken? No, you might. Is Kira on the board? I think I Kira is. I his names wrong. Is there a Kira? Yeah, Kiara. Yeah, Kiara. You want I'll Kiara? I'll take her. Yeah, okay. Kiara. All right. Five. Five players each, guys. Six. Six each. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Bingo. All right. That is our Bachelor family family fantasy draft. They're, they are like a big family. The kind of family that fucking wants to murder each other. Um, I like the core group that they have. They have enough crazies going on so far that's keeping me interested. And, um, I mean, no one jumps over a fence. Doesn't have that kind of titillation that Colton, you know, had. Yeah. But I like seeing the, the debauchery going on. All right, let's get to the football now. Fucking, by the way, two things before we get to football, and then I got to get out of here. Did you watch the Jeopardy thing? No. You didn't watch the greatest I've of all time? I've been following it. I've been following it. It ended last I night. I never watched Jeopardy, so didn't get into it now just because of the hype. They had a whole thing in prime time, greatest of all time. James Halsauer has the most records. He's the guy that just did that whole run. Mm -hmm. Ken Jennings, most uh, wins in a row. And then the guy who's won the most money all time. Right. I don't even remember his name. He didn't really do that well. Ken Jennings won last night, won a million dollars, beat everybody else. Fuck. Third time, yeah. Highest rated thing on TV all I week. know what that feels like. You motherfucker. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. I fucking The did. trash talk between the contestants has been pretty good, too. Ken, oh, the guy, was what they do is they play a game, a full game. They basically play two full games, add up the scores. Yeah. One guy went all in at the end of the first game and, you know, missed the question, so we had zero. So then they come back from commercial. I was like, all right, we've cleared everyone's scores, and we'll start fresh. And, and James goes... You kept his score. Yeah. Dig. He yeah. had zero. He's got zero now. The whole audience was like, ooh. It was like the most shit talk I've ever heard in the oh, history of fucking. It was great. Like, and it was almost like a fucking roast battle almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, there was like, got three, three geniuses probably for the first time on that show. Yeah. Oh. You see Alec Trebek break, too. Yeah. He loved it. And he was kind of, yeah. He was, yeah. A little <laughs> bit like, ooh, you guys are getting at each other. Okay. A little bit dicey in here. I like it. Um, it was fun to watch. And then also this Saturday, um, Cowboy, Cerrone, and Conor McGregor are fighting. Conor McGregor is, I think, a pretty big favorite. Cowboy, Cerrone's lost his last three fights. But it should be fun to watch because they both love to fight, actually fight. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a wrestling match probably. 
And I, I anticipate someone getting knocked out, and I think it's going to be Cowboy. But should be a fun, fun watch, uh, fight to watch because I enjoy watching McGregor fights. He's a big draw, and that's on Saturday. Uh, let's talk Sunday. Or you guys, I'll give you my suggestions, and then you can make your predictions. I'll leave. Okay. I don't even want to be a part of it. How about that? Are the Chiefs minus 10? I'll pull up your... Vegas I, Insider. That's, that's the Damn. read I have. Here's what I got. Minus or seven and a oh, half. Minus seven and a half. Okay, yes. that's what I have too. Um, I think KC wins. I can't see them not. They win outright. Yeah, uh, Tennessee. I think they win. Doesn't cover the spread. Kansas City blows them out just like they blew out the Texans. That's I think similar fifty-three fashion. is a big spread for Tennessee, Kansas City, because of the clock management style of ten- Tennessee. I, you know, obviously Kansas City can put up fifty by themselves, but if they don't have the ball, right. they might not be able to do it. Right. If Tennessee's running the ball; they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. So, so I would take the under and go Kansas City covering the spread. And again, I, 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 like, I like San Francisco to win. Do I think Aaron Rodgers can keep it within seven and a half? No. Probably not. I think they win by 10. I think their defense is too good. I think they're going to be all over him. I think he's not going to have a lot of time to throw the ball. He's going to be running. And I, I honestly hope he can get through the game without getting injured. That's a 31 to 10 game right there. I'm going to be contrarian and take the Packers. I think Aaron Rodgers is a vengeful person. Remember, he grew, up, he grew up 10. in the Bay. He was a Niners oh, fan. I, 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 there's a, there is for sure motivation there. It's going to be basically a home game for him. He went to Cal. so. But it's not just him. Agree. But I just think he's... Uh, I remember that you know the Niners had the first pick, and it was between Aaron Rodgers and Alex Smith. Now, and they if chose they, Alex Smith, and if he'll they never for some it. reason want to run the ball and and make passing a second, and and you may be able to give him time if you can start to run the ball. If they can run the ball uh, and get Aaron Jones going, and get and and make it so that it's not just going to be a pass heavy. I've got to step back and find Devonta Adams down the field. And having D Ford and and Bosa come after me every single down, that that could be a success to keep it within the seven and a half. But I don't see them winning the game. Oh, Thirty-one to ten. Um, yeah. By the way, I was right about the national championship too. But they didn't cover the over, which w- looked a hundred percent right at one point, mm-hmm. and they they, uh, they did not the seventy point over. Do you see the afterwards? Uh, oh, Beckham handing out cash to the yeah. LSU players, and yeah. they're saying it's fake, and like, no way that's fake. I don't know what's fake. I think Odell Beckham's fake. I don't know what that guy... Boogie McFarlane, he was exciting to see. I was excited to see Booger McFarlane and Lolo Jones on the fucking sideline. Yeah. <laughs> not exactly to see, excited to see Odell Beckham. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's my call for the... I mean... Go make some money, everybody. I, that's not bad, dude. I mean, we were totally wrong this week. Not we totally, wrong. totally wrong. Again. No, you were totally wrong in the Vikings game. I was totally right in the Vikings game. We were all totally wrong with the Ravens. Yes. None of us were right with it. It's always weird when the MVP is out by the divisional round. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. That's the podcast for this week. Uh, Oscar nominations came out. We'll talk about Oscars and movies and stuff next week and Grammy stuff, too. I think that the Grammy nominations. We got snubbed again. We did. Uh, that's the podcast. Uh, anyone plugs, 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 plugs. Uh, comedy store Thursday, really late in the OR. And then Friday, I'm doing Don't Tell Comedy in Hermosa Beach. And then Sunday, come to the Brody thing, but also come to ATC shooting uh, talk show format with Steve Byrne. It's free, 1030 in the belly room. Belly room, room nice. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sunday, come to the Brody thing. I'll be shooting up with ATC in the belly room, and I have a midnight spot. So Nice. Um, we're kind of hat I'm at the store Thursday night and Friday night. OR in the main room. Uh, Sunday, the Brody thing would be great to come to if you're around LA. And then Tuesday, I'm doing Lights Out on Comedy Central. And we're all at the Comedy Store La Jolla, all three of us. Yes, Valentine's weekend. But before that, I'm at Denver Comedy Works the weekend before and the Hollywood Improv in Hollywood, California, uh, Hollywood, Florida, Super Bowl weekend. So tickets are online there. Thank you guys very much for listening, and we're out. Very much for joining me. I want to see how hard it is. How you been, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. Welcome back. 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 Steve Ren is easy. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm the guy. Fucking lit. I'm the guy. I'm Steve Ren is easy. Lit. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm the guy. Fucking lit. I'm the guy. I'm Steve Ren is easy. What's the odd? What's the odd? What's the odd? What's 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 the odd? What's the odd? What's the odd? What's what's what's
so much Game of Thrones. You're just watching all of them? Non-stop. Non-stop. I, I, I told you what I'm doing. I just watched the last season. But that's not as fun. No. You don't understand, dude. It is. It, it, you don't understand, dude. It, 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 it.